Joining me today is Dr. Carl Ladd, who's the executive director of the New Hampshire School Administrators Association. Um, and, you know, we're, we spent a lot of time on sort of some of the economic issues mm -hmm. that I think the legislature is going to have to deal with. And at the end of the day, I guess what I've heard is it's going to be complicated mm -hmm. and it's not going to, there's no silver bullets. Right. Um, I want to talk about other issue, another issue mm -hmm. that's complicated and there's probably no silver bullet either. Mm -hmm. And that's the notion of school choice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how does your association, um, how do these um, administrators that, that you work with, um, what do they think about when they think about school choice? Well, I think the, it's, it's an interesting conversation to have in New Hampshire because many communities actually have school choice. If they don't have a school, say a high school within their community, they can form tuition agreements with um, any variety of schools around them to provide those educational services uh, at the high school level. If you don't have an elementary school or a middle school, um, it's perfectly acceptable and encouraged and necessary in order to do that. Um, I guess my concern around choice, at least the choice model that's being uh, presented right now, is that even if there is a school, there, there is an opportunity for parents to make a choice in the best interests of their own child, um, to send them to a private school, to perhaps send them to a parochial school. Um, there, there are some real concerns, I think, around that. Uh, there's, a, there's a constitutional question about whether or not public funds can be expended, certainly toward a religious school. Uh, the New Hampshire Constitution is actually very clear about that. That they can't. That they cannot. Uh, that uh, public funds cannot be expended uh, for any religious institution. Uh, that, that separation of church and state was made very clear by the founders in New Hampshire, much more strongly even than at the federal level. Um, and then I think the other piece that, that I personally am concerned about is we have no idea what these private schools do with these public funds. There's no accountability. Um, but are most of them, are they accredited through uh, NEASC? Or at least at the high school level? Some are, some aren't. Okay. Um, you don't have to be uh, NEASC approved. The only requirement in state law right now is that they be um, approved for attendance. That, that's the state law uh, for these uh, schools. And that does not say anything about whether or not students are obtaining an adequate education, uh, whether the schools are meeting the minimum standards that all public schools have to address. Um, oh. So it's, 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 a different, um, it's a different layer of rules and a different set of rules for them. So the public schools um, ha have to, by definition, accept all students within their district. Correct. Um, private schools don't. Mm -hmm. um, is there an issue around public funding going to schools that can exclude um, students specifically for either ability or um, chance of birth or mm -hmm. um, well I think that's another that's another element is not only do we not know what goes in goes on inside the walls of the schools because there is no accountability mechanism we also don't know what goes into the admission process of these schools because they are private schools they can pick and choose whomever they want public schools if you think about it the public schools are like the rainbow we take all the colors of the rainbow. Private schools and charter schools, they may be great for kids who are the color blue, but may not, public schools may not be great for that particular student, and that's fine, and that's, I'm a big supporter of charter schools. I think that they, they have a, a strong place in our New Hampshire education system, but I think that to, to say that because public schools, because of the federal regulations and state regulations and the constitutional requirements, have to meet the needs of the kids of all colors in the rainbow, that I think that it's, it, is a, it is a question of fairness when uh, legislators talk about competition and the monopoly of public education. Well, in order to be competitive, you have to be on the, the same level playing field and public schools are not on the same level playing field. So if a private school had open admissions and would accept any school, mm -hmm. any student um, that applied, mm -hmm. um, would that meet the test or one of the tests toward, um, you know, toward the movement of funds from public to private? 
Um, well, I think that we already have some of that. Um, I'm thinking of St. Johnsbury Academy in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Um, that is an approved school through the state of New Hampshire uh, because it does have open enrollment. It, it accepts special education students. It accepts all students. So um, they're able to accept and we are able to send them funds from New Hampshire. Um, if there were a, uh, a religious school, New Hampshire would not be able to do that, even if they had open enrollment. Because of because the, of the constitutional uh, mandate that says that we cannot. Well, you know, it's an interesting issue. We're going to have to get back to it, but unfortunately the show's <laughs> over and we're out of time. Thank you so much, though. Well, thank you very much for having me. I, I enjoyed it. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Capital Connections, your weekly access to politics and policy along the I-89 and I-91 corridors and how it impacts your life in our region. If you've got a comment or an idea for a future show, why don't you send me an email? And remember, join us at the same time next week for another edition of Capital Connections.